welcome. Welcome to the, the Hard Way Pod, the podcast. Um, for the listeners, I've got Mateen Stewart here, stand-up comedian, host, content creator, et cetera, really funny guy. Um, uh, how are you? Welcome. Have you heard of the podcast before? Yeah, I heard of it. Have you listened? You told me about it. Yeah, if you haven't, <laughs> right. So if you haven't listened to it, it's uh, it's basically, it's about learning from your mistakes or learning things the hard way. And I had paused it for a minute, but brought it back because I thought this might be a good outlet just for black voices to share stories because the whole country is learning the hard way somehow still that systemic racism is still a huge problem. So I thought maybe it could be helpful if I used it for that. But um, I'm also asking everybody, you know, and just the fact that you're here you're probably on board with it, but in the event you're not, you know, how, how do you feel about me as a white woman running something like this? That's like black lives matter based. Uh, I, I, I don't mind it actually. Um, my biggest issue with people is when they, they do it and then they act like they know everything. Mm. Um, that, that, that is where I have the, the issue with it or, you know, they, a lot of things that they might say comes from ignorance. Yeah. And, you know, they try to be like, well, this is how it should be, or this is, or, you know, they ask a black person like, oh, what, what can I do to help? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, well, like, yeah. Well, that's been a big, that's been a big thing. One, I can't promise you, I won't say anything ignorant on here. No, and that I that's, won't know. That's fine. That's which is, fine. which is kind of the point too, is where it's like, I'm, you know, as, as, quote unquote woke as I think or thought that I was like I'm not you know because I can't mm -hmm. possibly be as much because I've never you know had to experience being a black person in America or whatever anything like that so I can only do the best I can and then learn from it and I'm hoping that by accident people will hear that and you know you call me out do whatever um, and learn from things because like you said a lot of people have told me the last thing they want is somebody uh, white people coming to them and being like, how do I be not racist? Because you're like, I don't want to sit here and explain it to you. I'm fucking tired. Go do your own research, learn for yourself, you know? So I'm like, maybe this will like accidentally teach masses of people just by hearing stories and hearing like, you know, what you've been through or what like you want to talk about that you need or want out of the country and the government and everything that they'll, they'll just like see, hear your perspective and learn, you know, from you. Yeah, exactly. my biggest my biggest thing is for people to understand that uh, all of these things that Black people are fighting for isn't uh, a new uh, uh, revelation. It's not something that's that's new. It's something that Black people in America have been fighting for since they they've been here. And our history of being in America, you know, we we came from from most of us came from Africa mm -hmm. at some point. Our ancestors, and then we came here, and you. You work for free for 400 years, and then you know slavery was over. And then from slavery, it it was even more slavery because with the 13th Amendment and things are just just put in front of black people to not succeed right. for so many years. And then uh, you go through the 13th Amendment, then you go through like sharecropping and things like that, which is another form of slavery. And then you go through the Jim Crow laws that were started and then civil rights movement. And then, you know, we're still fighting for some of these same basic rights. Right. And, you know, a lot of comics talk about, I think Michael Shea has this thing where he's like, matters? Like, just matters. Like, that's it. We just want to, we just want to matter. Like, that's, <laughs> that's too much for you. And, and that's what it, what it comes to. Like, for me, I feel like it would be a lot more helpful if, white people understood that the privileges that they do have being a white person in America that other people don't have. Right. And I feel like everyone needs to understand their privileges. Like me, I understand my privileges as being a man. I understand that I've never had to go on a first date and thought, hey, this person could kill me. Right. I, I've never walked out of the door like, oh, I could get raped today. I understand that these are issues that I have never had to deal with as a man. And I feel like a lot of times white people don't, don't think about that. And in, 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 in today's 
times, you know, everyone wants to be like all kumbaya and all this other shit, but it's not, it's not yeah. kumbaya. I have, I grew up pretty privileged. Uh, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, both my parents are still married to each other. Uh, oh, wow. A, like a middle, middle class family in Detroit. I never had any struggles really. Uh, but that being said is that I have had issues with the police officers and I've gotten into arguments with some of my white friends where it's like, well, you grew up more privileged than me. You know, I, ha I didn't have this. I was, you know, eating mayonnaise sandwiches and blah, blah. I've gotten to more altercations with the police than you have. And to him, I'm like, you might have, but you and your friends were also criminals. You guys were doing criminal activity. Right. You guys were robbing things and, and doing drugs and shit. And yeah, the cops fuck with you because that's what you were doing. I yeah. had police fuck with me and I have never been in those situations. You know, I, I, when I was 16 years old, I had a cop pull a gun on me and put it to my head because I thought that they were there to help me. I had a flat tire and it was cold. I couldn't change my flat tire and I had to walk and call AAA. And okay. then I got back in my car and the police pulled behind me and I got out the car thinking that they were there to help and they pulled a gun on me. And, oh my fucking and they God. went through my car and like my cousin was like 13. He was all freaking out about it. And afterwards, they never... They didn't say why they did it. And I was like, why did you guys do this to me? Like, why did you guys do this to us? And they were just like, oh, someone said you had a gun. And they just got back in their car. Like nothing had happened. Someone and that's, said, yeah. And that's, that, that traumatized me. You know, that, I, there's things that I think about. Like I live in a house in North Hollywood and, um, and I lock myself out of my house. But I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm not going to try to break into my house. I'm not going to do that. Because yeah. I don't want anybody to be like, Oh yeah, there's a guy trying to break into this yeah, house. Yeah, you have a nice house too, so yeah. they'd be like, "Oh, this, you know, yeah, totally." There's, you know, big, and I, and I know what I look like. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big black man, and I'm less scary when I wear my glasses. But still, like, there are certain judgments that people have from just me being who I am as a person. That yeah. my friend who grew up, quote unquote, less privileged than me, will never have to worry about. No one has ever crossed the street when he was walking down the street. Right. Uh, no one has ever clutched their purse or locked their doors when you're walking across the, uh, the, the, the crosswalk. Uh, well, that's, a, that's an important uh, distinction that you made and, and has been brought up too, is like um, the, the white privilege does not mean like you didn't have to work for anything or you didn't struggle or you weren't poor. It's just mm -hmm. like just solely based on the color of your skin you end up more privileged because like you said, like when I've dealt with the cops, like I've had them not help me when they were trying to help me, but mostly like I was doing some fucked up shit that I, that the cops should have been getting me in trouble for where it's like, you know, I don't have the experience of, of like cops pulling a gun on me because they maybe heard I had a gun. And the fact that you mentioned the glasses thing, like Greg Edwards just brought this up on the episode where he's like, he's got like specific things that he does when he's getting pulled over, which is put on his glasses puts on sports on the radio because he doesn't want to be playing like hip hop or something because it's going to soften him and make him mm -hmm. less scary. And so it's very interesting to me that you said, oh, I look, you know, a little less intimidating when I've got my glasses on. And to me, that's like you said, something I wouldn't, it would never occur to me to have to think about. Yeah. I smile with my license. I smile. Yeah. I have to smile. My friend, he, he, he has a trick. Uh, a lawyer told him to wear a suit and tie when he goes to get his license and 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 to tell you that how how many tickets he's gotten out of just because he wore a suit and tie on his license oh, it, wow. it's just like we have to present ourselves as safe because yeah. we have such a, a a negative uh view of of us being black men in america and 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 that's just what i've been dealing with and what i tell people also is like i've been black all my life like mm -hmm. my whole life i've been black i didn't just wake up last week and was like oh if a police officer does some fucked up shit yeah that's i i shouldn't think that because the police the whole thing is to protect and serve right and so i shouldn't be afraid of something that's supposed to be there to help me and and in my life like i know that if some shit goes down you call the police like 911 you know that's what you do like it's, and it's, it, to me, it's like, fuck the police until you need the police. Like, we do right. need police. We just don't need the police as it is today. Right. You know, and for every single, police. every single situation should not require yeah. a, a man with a gun or like a woman, whatever, a cop with a gun to show yeah, up. It, it shouldn't. And also, I feel like th there shouldn't be um, 
cosmetologists that need to go to more schooling and do more training in the police officer. My friend's a hairdresser and she had to do like 1600 hours and still do like an apprenticeship for a year. A cop, it's like 600 hours to become oh a cop. You don't need a college degree. Um, you can be an 18 year old and be a police officer. Like really, you're gonna give an 18 year old with a high school diploma Crazy. done? That's, that just seems, that just seems asinine to me. Police reform needs to happen. Yeah, and it's 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 been needing to happen for years. The police are just to organize gang. They're a gang, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, this police is, you know, why did they say something?" The thing about it is, you you don't want they don't want to show dissension. You know, police officers are told that if a commanding officer is doing something, you're not going to say no because you don't want right. to show dissension. Well, you're in the cult now and it's like they'll turn they they turn against the people that that stick up for if they see police brutality going on or they call out you know racism it's like that person that is suddenly is fired from being a cop or yeah, you know right or they're missing or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck and, and it's a and it's a fucked up system and just even having done the research like you said like oh you know there was slavery for 400 years and 13th amendment but then it's like but what like why they made the police what i've learned recently is a 35 year old wasn't always just to like help everyone it's like no well since we can't have slaves this is kind of a way to like loophole into essentially like they're created as like a slave catcher for people that were still yeah that, yeah that, that still had slaves and it's like if you if you get a black man or woman on like a small crime now you've like suddenly ruined their their future because now they're a criminal forever yeah. you know they were putting people in jail uh for loitering Ugh. and putting you on a prison camp for loitering and that was just what was going on in the nation and it's not that long ago like we try to make it seem like it's so far far ago like my mom my mom is 65 years old she she grew up in tuscaloosa alabama and she went to a segregated school wow you know, my mom's not 95. My mom, yeah. she's 65 years old. And that's like 10 years old. Yeah. That's like 10 years older than my mom. Yeah. And she, she grew up, uh, there. She grew up, you know, drinking out of uh, colored only water fountains. America is, has a nasty history of treating black people and other people in general that aren't, that they don't consider part of our, the country. Well, that, and that's just stupid to me. It, yeah. Japanese people, they put in internment camps. The Chinese people, they, they put them in, made them slaves to, to, to build railroads. Uh, they were awful to the Irish people. And Irish people were indentured servants too when they get here. And a lot, like, a lot of Irish people try to go like, we were slaves too. But you guys, Irish You're people, like... they, they went quickly when, when, the, when the other white people were like, hey, you guys are better than these black people. Don't form oh. with them. No, like, oh yeah, we are. And that's and that's what I'm saying. Like when when Irish people bring that shit up, like, yeah, but you guys quickly changed when they told you guys you were better than the slaves. Right. And yeah, they it was a big revolt with black and Irish people against uh, the slave owners, and that's what slave owners did. They told the Irish people they were better than the black people, and oh, that's how they get them on back on their side. And it's like that. That's like the crazy thing to me, because to me, like having one not dealt with it and not and like I grew up not I wasn't born in this country and I grew up in a very like on an island uh in Curacao in the Caribbean so it was like a very diverse country and I was around a lot of languages and a lot of different people so to me you know seeing different people of color was never weird or different to me and my dad's not American so like like the xenophobia thing does not hit me as hard because I've traveled a lot as a kid I was lucky enough to do that because he's a my dad's a pilot or he was so you know all of these things like you're saying there's like such a history mostly towards against black people but like anybody that's different that they don't understand and like threatens their sort of like white superiority or white supremacy is is the person that gets pushed down and it's like yeah it's a really fucked up situation um I can't I, like, I, for me, when I go other places, like, I'm an American. You know, I've, I've been lucky enough to travel the world a bit. And it was, it's never been a thing where it's like, oh, that's a black guy. It's always been like, oh, that's an American. Yeah. And, and but in America, like, it's, 
it's not it's not like and it's weird because as much as america has done to black people i am i am still i'm i'm happy to be an american i i would not want to be any place in the world i i i love america but i don't always like america right and that is just you know where i stand now where it's like hey these are all the things that's been happening you know we just want we just want to be treated the same and a lot of times people say uh, equality but for me i feel like equity is a better word okay and i i would really want equity i want to have the same opportunities the same the same things for everybody we want to be able to you know because people aren't going to be the same exactly but if i get the same opportunities as as you then then everything is going to be better you know? yeah you get to go from the same starting point versus a place where like you got to like start the race an hour later than everybody else and so you're already behind and and you know and uh, yeah that, that i mean and that's not that big of an ask frankly no. so <laughs> and the narrative always when you you hear people like i have the same opportunities or i lost this job to this black man and not but that's that they speak individually as in that is one situation that happened to you now you see this time when you got this job this this black man got a job over you just times that by a million yeah. so if you're telling me that oh you this black man got a job over you that's just you okay now just think of all the jobs that black people didn't get all the all the interviews that I didn't get called for because I have an ethnic name. It's it's been proven. There have been studies and studies where if you put a, 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 a American sounding name with an ethnic sounding name on two different resumes that are exactly the same, they always call the American sounding name. Like almost a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And that is where we need to get past. And that's why like affirmative action and all this other stuff and and i i get into it with people about affirmative action where they don't know the history of affirmative action and affirmative action was 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 built and was presented to help white women that is why it started oh. that's why that's why affirmative action happened in america because white women weren't getting jobs yeah. so so when when they presented that that's and that's who's benefited the most from a verbal action. And if yeah. you tell people that, they'll look at you stupid because they don't know. They well, don't know because they, they connect affirmative action with black people. But, yes. But yeah, but to your point, yeah, like I remember like putting like my name is like Jesse with an E on resumes because I was like nobody is hiring Jessica for some mm -hmm. reason. And like the amount of more views I got, maybe I still didn't necessarily get the job. Like it, it's it's true. And like you said, you have an ethnic name. To me, I don't get why why we're even asked like what your race is, what your, what your gender is on the application. And you can still put, I'd rather not say, but to yeah. me, it's like, if I put, I'd rather not say, then they're not going to, yeah, they're not going to hire me at all. So this is gonna be trouble. Right. Exactly. So now I'm like, well, now I have to say, because if I don't, then I'm going to be trouble. Like you mm -hmm. said. So it's like, it's, it's a double-edged sword like that. It's fucked up. Um, I'm interested to know though, like, um, because like you said, you grew up, you know, still quote unquote privileged yourself, but still had to deal with being a, a black man in a privileged world. And you said where you're, you're in a w more white neighborhood, how much you had to kind of go out of your way to make more white people more comfortable and adapt and like adapt to them. And the thing about it, I didn't grow up in around a while, like from no. Detroit, I'm from Detroit. So Detroit, uh, when I was growing up was about 90 one percent black okay Detroit was the blackest major city in america uh i grew up in a, a area in detroit called rosedale park and rosedale park is the most diverse area in detroit so when my parents um like in the early 90s there was a there was a big uh surge of young black professionals leaving the city of detroit because once De once all the black people came to detroit in the 50s i mean once yeah, once all the black people from the South came to Detroit in the 40s and 50s for job opportunities, all the white people left. So that was called white flight. So when all the black people came to Detroit, all the white people white left. White flight. White flight. So all the white people left. And so then when all the black it's like people- the opposite of gentrification. Yes, <laughs> right? yeah. all left once the black people came. So they all moved white flight in the 50s, 60s. Uh, but all the white people left Detroit, but then all the white people were still the police officers in Detroit. And Detroit had a very racist history of the police and how they treated people. They used to go by and just randomly pick black people out. They, they had this thing where they would pretend 
the Detroit police would pretend to be uh, like a junkie to sell, to just gonna buy from people, and then they would just beat them up. 1967, um, riots, three three cops killed a bunch of young uh, black people and tried to cover up, and they got out for free. That was the movie Detroit was about. Uh, that 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 shooting where they killed those three black people, they got off. The cops got off, you know, no charges, off of yeah. technicality. Uh, and so there was a lot of racist stuff happening. And then Detroit got a black mayor, Coleman Young, and he came in and he cleaned all that shit out. He was a no nonsense, you know, fuck everybody. This is this. I'm gonna run my city how I'm running it. So Detroit went on like an upswing. And then in the '80s and '90s, where my parents' generation, when they were starting getting their money, a lot of those people moved out of the city of Detroit. So it was it was it was it was like middle class, upper class, black flight. So all those oh. black people were moving to the suburbs because that's where that's where the white people go. So that was that was nice. But to kudos to my parents is when they got their first big promotion and they bought their first house, they wanted to make sure that they bought a house in the city of Detroit. My mom told me she would never live in a suburb, so she lived in the city of Detroit. So the neighborhood that I grew up in was was diverse, and I know my block was about 50-50, but I was never around any white people. Oh, like, wow. I had a couple friends, the phrase, they're still there. Shout out to the phrase. They're still at the same house. Um, they had two boys and a girl, and they were they were friends that I played with. But even them, they they sent their kids to private schools. And so I went to like a pretty Afrocentric private school called Nataki Taliba in Detroit. And they made sure that they taught us our history was yeah. part of everybody's history. So we were learning about Benjamin Banneker, who, who designed Washington, D.C. A lot of people don't know that. A black yeah. man designed Washington, D.C. He was also the first black man to, to make a, a, a clock out of wood. Um, you know, we had historical people come to our school. Macy Jemison, when she came back from space, she's the first black woman in space. She came to our school. So our school was like black, unapologetically black. That's we awesome. went to uh, Africa as like a trip. So when in 1990, we went to Africa and I spent some time in West Africa and in, in Senegal and Ghana and uh, saw Gori Island, which is the island that they would keep the slaves to season them, quote unquote, season them before they would go on their um, transatlantic what, what does ride. What that mean, season them? Yeah, so you got to get, you got to prepare them for it. That's what they would call it. To Like you season meat, you would have to break the slave down to get them into a place where they don't want to fight or revolt. Oh, they don't want to. Yeah. Oh my, like kind of like a Stockholm syndrome thing. <laughs> yeah. You take their soul. So oh my God. this is where I grew up in. So I, you know, we were celebrating Kwans in the eighties. Um, so this is my base. And I went to all schools, mostly with black people. And uh, so that was where I was coming from. And then uh, when I went to Australia as a student ambassador, I, I was my, my first time hanging around like white people. I was like one of four black kids. There were 44 other kids that were all white. Oh, and I was a little bit in a culture shock because I, did, I just didn't know. I didn't know about like white people. Like I was like, oh, I, I, watch, I watch Full House. You know, like, <laughs> I was like a thing. So it, was, it was just, it was very shocking. It was a, shocking to me. And I remember writing in my journal on the plane that, I was like, I don't have anything in common with any of these people on this trip. And I was like, well, I do have in common with something with the other three black people, but it's just me being black because those other three black people grew up in the suburbs. So they're, they had like a different. And they didn't have your black history and your, yeah. and your travels to Africa and all those things, because like, those are really important. And I've seen a lot of like clothing you've worn, like, and, and, and things like that and ties to like, where it's like African garb that you've got. And so yeah, that I, makes I, a lot I more represent, sense. I yeah. represent the motherland. I um, I, I I'm a big component. Of, I love Africa. I feel like Africa is is the place that's been you know raped and pillaged, and all yeah. its resources have been taken. Uh, because when you look at all the other countries that was going to Africa, like England, there's nothing in England. So of course they want to get out and nothing. England yeah. gives you nothing. They they, <laughs> they give don't even you have good food. Jeez. No, they yeah. give you. <laughs> Music, maybe the Beatles, maybe that's uh, <laughs> yeah. that's the thing that come from England. But yeah. other than that, there's nothing there. So they they had to go out and, and rape and pillage. But it was just unique because I went in like the late '90s to Australia and being around all those you know all the white people and it was just different. And for me, I was like, oh wow, this 
we, you know, we're the same. We like some of the same stuff. And I just remember this girl, you know, she was like, oh, you, you remind me of my ex-boyfriend. And that was crazy to me. And I was like, what? You had a, you had a black boyfriend? She was from Virginia because there was a Virginia delegation there. Oh. I, she's like, yeah. I'm like, really? In Virginia? Like, that's, that's a lot. Yeah, that, that seems like very rare. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, in the 90s, late 90s? Like, is, is he your ex because your parents killed him? Like, yeah, I, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. It, it was weird. But she's like, no, if I ever bought a white man home, my parents would be very, like, um, shocked. And uh, years later, she did end up marrying a, a black dude. Um, and I, I did go to the wedding. I was at the wedding. Oh, wow. Had, you know, like, so you became friends with her. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we yeah. stayed friends. Like, yeah, we stayed friends. We were like pen pals. That was back in the day when you would like have people's aims and stuff. Oh, um, my God, aim. Yeah. Yeah, That's, aim. yeah what, how old are you? I'm, I'm, I'm old. <laughs> well, I'm 35, so I'm I don't older think, than you. okay, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're, if you're on like, big, you look young as shit. I thought you were going to say you were 35 or like no, something no, around this. Yeah, I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got a youthful face because I smile yeah. a lot, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was like my first experience like around white people. And then I went to Australia and like being there and seeing how they do things and their racism is a little bit different because it's more, it's more like, Hey, what's up? We're all right, Mike. And I, I, I tell the story on, on stage and, it, and I was there and, and we were there with a couple of uh, Australian kids that were just at the hotel chilling. And I was hanging out with them and my friends were there from the trip. And one Australian dudes, he was like, Hey Mike, are you the only nigga fella on the trip? And like everyone froze. Oh, and I was like, whoa. And I was like, dude, you can't. What did, what, like, what did you say? And he just, he was like, oh, are you the only nigga fella? Oh, he like, said it again? He said it louder. Because oh, he thought I didn't hear him. Because yeah. he thought I didn't hear him. I'll, I'll never forget that as long as my life. And I was like, God damn it. And, I, and the thing about it is he wasn't coming from a hateful place. It was more like, hey, this is what you are. Like, this is what we call them there. Oh, so and it's like more openly, like not like, because because people always that that uh, defend using the N word, and they're like, I'm not saying it at somebody angrily. I can say it like with a with with not a hard R at the end, and it's fine yeah. if I'm rapping. No, this was, this was know, definitely <laughs> hard. This is hard R. Oh, it was hard R. Yeah, Even still though. Yes. Yeah, but but like they they just think that that's the term. Yeah, he was like, yeah, well you 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 nigga. Like that's what he said to me. Like it was oh. like, whoa, whoa, and then we had to tell him like. And it's so funny because I wanted to be like, oh, he said it out loud. You guys are used to saying this when I'm not here, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fact, and that's why everybody's uncomfortable. They're not like, we've never heard this. They're like, uh oh, now he, uh, yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to say it around them. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so, so that was like my really first experience. And then, like, I, I just realized, like, oh yeah, like, especially being 17 and being away from my parents, it was just like a thing where, you know, a 17 year old boy, I'm just like, I was worried. I was like, oh, there's no, there's no black girls on this trip. And I was like, wait a minute. There's <laughs> girls on this trip, though. You know, so it's just, it's thing where it was just like, oh, yeah, these, they're, they're just girls. Yeah. Just girls. So, so you kind of had to be like, oh, I, I, I could date you. But like, I mean, it, if you've never seen it, because did you see a lot of interracial relationships growing up? No, if you didn't well, really see really, it. Yeah. Not being from Detroit, because like, there was, there was a couple, it was a, it was a couple, Tremina and Paul. In my school Paul was this white dude and Tremina was black and forever we thought that Paul was an undercover cop we were like why the fuck is Paul at the school <laughs> in Detroit why is he at a Detroit public school and he wasn't like Eminem or anything he was like oh. blonde ponytail blonde mustache he wore khakis and a tucked in shirt oh, at a Detroit boy. public school we're like this dude well, no, is no wonder you think he's a cop Jeez. yeah we're like this guy's a cop and Blonde people should never have a mustache. Sorry. No, it was weird. Yeah. It was weird. <laughs> I was like, is it? <laughs> What's this mustache? texture? Oh, yeah, it, was, it was weird. Uh. So, so then, like, from there, from Australia, and then I went to a historically black college. So it was just like, I'm just around my people. And a lot of times I hear things from other black people like, oh, well, you know, going to a historically black college, it doesn't prepare you for the real world. And, and essentially it does because it lets you know how the real world sees you and what to expect. Right. And I was always uh, a student and a, and a family member in that, in the department that I was in, I wasn't just another number. 
I wasn't just the black guy that's in my psychology class right. because I was in a room surrounded by other black people. And I talked to one of my friends about this because she grew up around white people. And so she said that she never felt like she fit in with the white people. But then when she got around black people, she never felt like she was black enough. So she was a bit in this purgatory. And I've gone through that sometimes where like white people, um, you know, have, have said things to me and then black people like, oh, you're not, yeah, yeah, you're black. And I had a, a white woman tell me like, oh, you're black, but you're not like black, black. And I was like, bitch, I'm from, uh, I will beat your ass. Or, I, or did she say you, you're well-spoken? Did yeah, she use well-spoken. that, that That's like that, thing. that thing that people don't realize is very insulting? <laughs> very insulting. I'm glad that you, you brought that up because that was a, one of my biggest problems with Barack Obama is like everyone was, be, was saying that he was well-spoken. He was like, oh, he's well-spoken. I'm like, what the fuck is he supposed to sound like? He is running for president. He went to two Ivy League schools. Like, how is he supposed to sound? Yeah. Like, and you, sh- you shouldn't be surprised. Like, the fact that you're surprised a Black person sounds intelligent to you or, like, isn't speaking, like, a certain way that you think is lesser, you know, yeah. that that's... that's only, it's, we're the only people that get that. Because, if, if, you know, you don't meet someone from Texas and they're white and be like, oh, my God, you're... I thought you were going to sound like a redneck, but you're like, you're very well-spoken. Yeah. And- I mean, I would think that like, cause I definitely, as somebody who I grew up in South Florida, but like had to like learn to, cause I, even though I grew up around a ton of different languages, I didn't grow around, up around the Southern accent and the Southern mm-hmm. accent to me, like I had to re- in my brain, like it was like a racism against white people where I was like, if you're from the South and you have a drawl, I have to not assume you're stupid. Like, and yeah. I, and I had to like untrain myself. Cause I'm like, that doesn't mean you're dumb. That's just your accent. Yeah. You know? and I, I go through that too, because I, it's such an affect that you hear when it comes from racism. So like I was on a plane and it was just these guys from Mississippi just talking, right. Talking. And all I heard was like, nigger, nigger, nigger next to me, nigger next to me. And I was like, no, they weren't saying that. I was like, what? I was like, I was like, I was, that's I was, what you heard just in their, in their tone. Yeah. I was looking like they're just want to say it. And then um, the guy stood up and he like turned around and hit me with his backpack. He was like, oh, excuse me, sir. I didn't mean to hit you. And I was like, ah, that's right. Call me, sir. It was such a weird feeling because I was like, I can't, I can't just, uh, but it's, but I was, I was taught, I was brought up and, and my grandmother's from Kentucky. My mother's from the South where my grandmother would say, you know, just assume they're racist until you prove them right. Until they prove you right. And that is such a powerful statement to me because a lot of times people are like, oh, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. But my grandmother growing up from the South, that's what she, that's what she grew up with. And so that was a world that she grew up with. And I am never surprised, right? I am never surprised if a white person does something racist. Like I'm never, never, never. shocked. I'm never shocked. No matter like, how long you've known them. Yes. No matter how long like, I've known them. And like, do you have like have an example, like does something racist or says something like, uh, not that, any of these are okay, but like more like microaggression versus like overtly racist. Like what's your, what's your, well, I'm, I'm talking about like, like if I, if like one of my best friends, like if you're like, Oh yeah, he tweeted nigger, 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 nigger. I was like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, oh I, would, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be like, Oh my God, not, not him. Like <laughs> not Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, Oh yeah. This, this tiger just ate this live thing. It yeah. was in a cage like that. Oh, okay. I'm not surprised. Uh-huh. I'm not, like, I'm not shocked. Like, anytime someone's like, oh, this man was horrible to a woman. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I'm never, because there's so much history of it, that yeah. it's not a shock. Like, I'm never, like, I hate when people are like, oh, Donald Trump said this? Of course he said that. Yeah. He's been saying it the whole time. He's been showing you who, he, like, why? He's been, we, yeah, why he's been showing us since the beginning who he is and that he's, like, a super racist idiot more from the on beginning. His from the beginning his family his I'm, I'm reading this book now while i'm listening to it because i don't read i just listen but um you know just they created a monster and oh, are, the mary trump book yeah, uh, her dad, I, yeah. Her, and, and they fucked her dad up she was like telling like how he was an alcoholic but it all came from like his family not feeling like he was enough and he was the, he's the only self-made trump her dad but oh, he wow. couldn't get it straight because he was, he was addicted to alcohol, but, but yeah, so like, yeah, so back to going to like black school and then coming out to Los Angeles, like living here was like the first time that I was around diversity 
uh, my in the first time in my life when I moved to Los Angeles because like, I could go a day without seeing a, a black person, and I that and never at no point in my life would that have ever happened before I moved to Los Angeles. Yeah, so that's like a big culture shock then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. or being being the only person in the store that speaks English, like that was that was interesting to me too. Like, oh wow, no one speaks English here. Okay, uh, but then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in Southern California, which is used is Mexico. Pretty, it's Mexico. Like, yeah, it's, it's Mexico. Uh, so that 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 was my biggest shock moving here, like not being around black people, and and I've just learned how to, you know, to deal with that. And I, there's been many times where I've been the only black person in a room in places. And that didn't happen until I moved to Los Angeles. Uh, and a lot of white people can't say that. Yeah, lot, we're, lot, we're, lot, were you the only white person in the room? Yeah. Mean? yeah. I, I talked to some of my friends about that. I'm like, have you ever been the only white man in a room? And I'm like, I, that, I've never experienced that. <laughs> yeah. No, the only, like the closest, I, like the, and I, and I think I appreciate this, like, cause it weirdly, like my mom sent my brother to a private middle school mm-hmm. and cause like he was, you know, you know, there's always like one of the siblings that's like psychotic compared to the other one who's calm and I was the calm one. Right. So I went to public school and he went to private school for some reason. And, and like my school was like predominantly Haitian so like I had a lot of like like the the ratio of black people to white people there were way less white people than there were black people Mm. and like I I think like getting used to that environment like you know I I didn't have to get necessarily used to it but it was way different than my elementary school when I first moved to America which was mostly white and then my high school uh, Curacao which is uh in the off the coast of Venezuela it's next to Aruba everybody knows Aruba. Yeah, um, Andrew Jones is from there, I think, the baseball player. Oh, um, yeah, Andrew Jones is from Curacao. They another, always are in the yeah. Little League World Series. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm thinking of a different guy too, um, that has like a less white sounding first name. Um, Sammy Sosa. No, he's from the Dominican Republic. Oh, okay, never mind then. Um, you're probably right. Um, but but yeah no like but that was that even that like i didn't learn till later like that the dutch colonized that island you know Mm. and so it's like oh so we were essentially the you know the white people that took over and they didn't like us good to know yeah dutch yeah it's because like that the curacao aruba and bonaire is like the dutch antilles it's called the netherlands antilles and it's owned by holland i don't know that it isn't technically anymore but it's still like they speak dutch there English, Papimento, which is like the native language of the island, and that's like the most predominant language, which mm. is like a, like a mixture of like Portuguese, Spanish, French, and um, yeah, and it, there's and it, but I, but like growing up there, I didn't know that like I, I just was born there and was like, oh, there's several colors of people here, but it's like, oh no, we're like the Dutch invaders that were like, there's a cool port on this island and we want it, so we're gonna take it and you know kind of meld ourselves in. Um, but yeah, I, I learned later that there, there was like racial strife that I didn't know of growing up, but I was only there till I was like nine, but, uh, it's just interesting, like getting to have been exposed to not always being around white people or even just like people like in America, that are like, this is America speak English. Like, I think it's cool to know more languages. And I wish that I kept more of my languages from growing up, which I, I didn't like I can speak a tiny bit of Dutch and a tiny bit of Spanish and way less Papimento but it's like I you know when people are like this is a, this is America speak English I'm like no like why isn't it cooler to be cultural and like open I don't know so I think that definitely helped me out as far as like just being in different situations but it didn't help me out in this situation because I still being white have the privilege of not having to have to pay attention to a lot of things you know Like there's so many things that I'm learning now as a 35 year old that like, I'm like, shit, I didn't get taught this in school in history class. I didn't get, you know, I didn't have to know this because it wasn't my problem, so to speak. So now it's like, you almost have to make it your problem or you're part of the fucking problem. Yeah. People, people give the Dutch a a pass because they have good weed, but like (laughs) their history, it's, it's nasty. Like King Leopold is the worst tyrant ever besides the guy in China. That killed a bunch of people like it and and a lot of people don't know like you never you always hear about hitler and you 
and, and Stalin, but you don't hear about King Leopold and all the shit that he did no. in, in, the, in South Africa. And, and I didn't know about it until uh, I was working on a play and they, and they did a whole play about him and how he was. This is pre-Hamilton. They had a black guy play King Leopold, which, oh. was, which was very interesting. Uh, but they, they, didn't, they didn't sham it up like Hamilton did. <laughs> Shammed up. I haven't seen Hamilton. Oh. I've never wanted to see it because like, I don't know why. Like, uh, I saw like it was because I watched this Curb Your Enthusiasm episode with Lin-Manuel Miranda. And I know this was after Hamilton came out and I lived in New York. I don't think when I was in New York, Hamilton wasn't there yet. But because that was years ago when I was in my 20s. But I remember seeing like Lin-Manuel Miranda rap on the Curb episode. And I was like, Ugh. And I didn't, and so because of that, I was just like judging it and didn't want to uh, watch it. Cause I was like, I don't want to see him rap. It sounds very cringy to me. Oh, it's awful. It's, it's an awful musical. And <laughs> a lot of people are like, well, that's fun. I'm like, yeah, it's fun. It's, it's liberal porn. It's, li <gasps> it's, it's fucking white millennial liberal porn. Oh boy. Often's history for people. It's like black guys playing white guys that own the black guys. But we're oh. rapping. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am a big hater of Hamilton. I think uh, lit, written by Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that was the thing is I was like, wait, but you made me want to watch it even less than I already did, which was none. So good. It, All right. not, I'm going to send you this article where it, it says like, if people who like Hamilton are the worst people in the world, <laughs> we, we, we should, it's a problem that they are the people that are making decisions for people. Oh man, yeah, because like what when they just released it on on like Disney Plus or whatever, like everybody was talking about. It, I was like, not this shit again. I already didn't yeah, want to watch I it the first time. Like, now I can tell these Hamilton jokes. <laughs> I got booed out of college because I said I hated it, and 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 then I I, I was like, really? You guys are because uh, I hate Hamilton. And I was like, my bad. I realized that me saying I hate Hamilton is your N word. So uh, oh oh, it's like Karen's thinking their name is an N word. I'm like, oh my god, like if you stop it. No, they, they were mad at me. It was just it was a liberal arts college. And I was like, oh, this. But yeah, you, people were like, well, you know, it's fun now. It's fun. I'm like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's fun. Another thing, like uh, the Declaration of Independence, everyone like that signed it, like 90% of the people own slaves. Like, yeah, all men are uh, Yeah, with that, with that picture where like all of the, them yeah, are circled. Wow. And yeah. some people like, if, people were shocked, like, oh, really? Like, yeah. us. They were rich white dudes yeah. in the 1700s. Like, if yeah. you were rich and you were white, you owned slaves. Like, there were slaves in Michigan. Like, and then at one point, this, and I, it was so funny. It was this thing on, on TikTok. It was, I hate that it was on TikTok because it was so funny. It was like, what do you not say in an argument? And I think it might have been on, like, the Corbair show. Because we're talking about the Confederate flag, these this white dudes like that's my heritage, that's my family, you know, blah 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 blah. And then this black guy was like, "Really? That's your family?" He's like, "Yeah." He's like, but that, "Don't you think it represents slavery or whatever?" He's like, "Slaves. My family was poor. We couldn't afford no slaves." And oh my like, god! <laughs> what yes. don't you say to a black man? Like, uh, I did see oh. that one where the guy was like, "He's like, he's like." you know we struggled too we couldn't afford slaves we were poor it's like you know how much a slave costs oh yes oh my god it was also like another one i saw to that point i think it was also on tiktok like fucking everything is right now it was like this one guy of course a white guy that was like defending the confederate flag he's like the confederate flag and confederacy was not just about slavery it was about a lot of a, a lot of other things of our history that are important and then the interviewer was like okay so like name another thing that it was about other than slavery and the guy's like uh i don't uh i don't have he literally had like no other yeah. no answer it's just because they want to do it in and like i don't understand how any american can be a nazi or call themselves neo-nazi we beat the nazis uh america beat the confederates uh it's a it's a it's a flag that was stemmed in hate. One of the most racist, uh, evil people was was pro Confederacy, and he ended up being a U.S. senator in South Carolina. Yeah. His name is uh, Richard Tillman, I believe. Uh, they still have a building. The main building at Clemson University is still named after this man. He, you know, he you know was pro lynching. He would he would argue about you know lynching people. On the on the fucking congressional floor about well, you should be lynching these Negroes, you know. That's he didn't fucking say insane. Um, yeah, and this is 
this is 150 years ago. This is not even three, four, five years, 100 years ago. This is, this is the America, and a lot of new Republicans are uh, come on like, yeah, you know, us Republicans, we, all, we, were, we were against slavery and the Democrats, and that, that's true. The Democrats were, were very racist, okay? They, they were, Andrew Jackson was the, the main Democrat. And he's the reason why the Democrats have the jackass as their, as their slogan. <laughs> they were called Democrats jackasses. And they would call him Andrew Jackass Jack. They call <laughs> him Andrew Jackass Jackson. That's and amazing. He was like, "Yep, I'm a jackass." And he was like, "Hey, fuck this! You know, we're gonna this is gonna be our our mascot." And you know, he was a Democrat, and it was like, "Oh yeah, the Democrats." But but things change. Things evolve. Yeah. And then they flipped to where it was like, you know, and that's not to say that the Democrats are good now either. Like personally, I'm like, both sides are fucked off. Yeah, and I want to feel about uh, the Clintons. This is girl I deal with. She's a big Trump person. I don't want to get it. She's one of those sorrows and conspiracy theories things. And I'm like, listen, I don't like Hillary Clinton either. But I, I can definitely say that Hillary Clinton would have been a better president than Donald Trump. Oh, my God. Who can't tweet correctly. Who's. If, if you look at it, if you look at her resume, she might have been like one of the most qualified people to, to run a yeah. company. Yeah, and that doesn't mean she wasn't but, shitty in certain ways, but... But her and her husband did some, some, some whack shit to the Black community, which is, which is what politicians do. Yeah. They, like, it's just what, that's the America that I'm used to. So when you tell me like, this is all the shit that she's done and blah, blah, blah. But, but if you have to deal with like, it's like a what, would you rather? Like, would you rather burn to death or die in your sleep like, yeah <laughs> yes that was an option i would yes. rather die in my sleep like yes Trump is definitely burning to death we are burning to death and at least with hillary clinton we would have died in our sleep at least we wouldn't have known you know that's that's what it that's yeah. what essentially happens when democrats are like doing all this other stuff joe biden you know he he was one of those super predator yeah. people and put a lot of you know pay for pay for play as far as like getting black people to go to jail and privatizing yeah. the president's pr- prisons but i still think he would be a better president than donald trump and like i just don't get how some of these trump supporters are like oh yeah I'm like did you see what he did you see what he said yeah like, did you did you hear the word and like because all like all the trump supporters like having family members that are trump supporters that i've tried to talk to and i'm no longer speaking to but we'll try to circle back when i have the energy again you know as we get closer to it because i'm just trying to like because I have a lot of people in my family that voted for him the first time. And I was like, what? And then now they're like, fuck that. What? there's a couple left that are still going to do it, even though they don't like him, but are still willing to do it. And I'm like, I don't understand. Because you can't, they don't want to, they don't want to be wrong. No one wants, and this is how people are and and how we are built is none of us, no, nobody, no human wants to admit that they're wrong. That is the hardest thing to do, to admit that what your decision that you made was not the right decision. Yeah. And, and that's, that, people don't want to do that. People don't want to be like, oh yeah, I was wrong about this guy. You know, that's why when everybody says they were wrong, they always cry about it, because it's so yeah. hard. They're not crying yeah. what they did, they're crying because they had to build that muster and muster up that courage to do that. They're sad that they have to do it. They're not sad for what they did, they're just sad that they have to admit. They're sad it. that they're like, now Now they're exposed, you know, and it's a vulnerable place to be. So it makes you cry, you know? Yeah. But but it's just, it's to me, it's jarring that to see, like at the very least, I think it's progress that the, the two members of my family that are still probably, you know, who knows, but still about to vote for him again come November versus the others that have, flipped thank fuck um is that at least they're they acknowledge he's an idiot but they're still selfish enough too that they're like well but you know i want my guns and uh democrats want to take my guns i'm like nobody's trying to take your guns okay we're just trying to fucking make sure we ask a little more questions okay but that that's beside the point but it's like you know even still i think that's progress to at least acknowledge this person is a fucking idiot because like right. otherwise i think you're stupid if you can't see that you're you hear what he says but then there's the other people that are so prevalent still that are like he's the best president i've ever had he you know we've ever had isn't it possible like i had to like i argued with this girl until i was like we gotta we just gotta part ways you know because she like was somebody that i knew from high school that was like a good friend of mine and i was like how could you be a trump supporter 
Um, and like, she's like, so loves him. And it's like, isn't it possible that he's just like really means well? I'm like, no, it's fucking not possible that oh. he means well. And everything that's bad about him isn't fake news and everything that's good about him isn't right news. I'm sorry. Like, that's insane. But people I really think that. The personification of white privilege. He is what, if you look up white privilege in a dictionary, his face should be there. Mm -hmm. You know, came from a rich family, never had to work anything, got shitty grades. You know, they made a call for him to get into Penn. Like, he didn't have the grades to get into Penn. They made, his father made a call for him to get into Penn. Uh, you know, went, was able to fail multiple times and still able to, to, to succeed because of the way his family was. He he's a shitty businessman. Everyone's like, oh, he's a good business. No, he's a shitty business. He's gone bankrupt so much, and he's been sued over his fake ass university. He's been Never sued for. People. He's been sued for like a uh, charity fraud. Like and be, like, how do people ignore this and all? Like, but like you said, it's like they don't want to be wrong. He he is like everyone's like he's a, like I don't understand how any Christian could like this man because he's never been to church a day in his life. He's not, a, he couldn't read anything from the Bible. The fucking he, predator. Everyone was calling Barack Obama a Muslim. And I'm like, Barack Obama grew up in the church. I am, I, I love Barack Obama because of who he was and how he, how he represented himself. But, but I can still now being an educated person, know that this, Barack Obama was not flawless. Yeah. He presented himself. He's, he, he did a lot of fucked up shit and he was in bed with a lot of corporations and he killed a lot of Syrian people, but he was still, he was presidential and he wouldn't have been able to get away with half the, not even a, a third of the, not, no, a, one sixteenth of the shit that President Trump would be able to get rid of. No he, fucking he way. He would have been Obama, removed from office yeah, if he had, for the shit Trump got impeached for. He wouldn't even been put in a position. If Barack Obama had three baby mamas from three different weddings and had five children from three different women, they would be like, oh, he's a... He's a, he's a slut. He's a whore. He's yeah. this. He's no good to be president. If, if Michelle Obama was, was posing naked before, like, she, no, no, she, she he president and they would shit on her and talk about, she looks like a man. This girl tried to tell me that she's, a, she's a, she was a, she was a, she's a transgender woman and all this other stuff. Oh, about like, Michelle? Yeah. Like she was born oh a boy. And all this. I'm like, that is the most ignorant shit. And Sorry, you're jealous of her strong arms. Okay, yeah, maybe I mean, do some she, fucking push-ups. She's more qualified. She was more qualified to be president than, than, than Obama was, and and that was just my biggest thing. Like they, they there's no, there's no uh, criticism of the man. There's no criticism of him. There's from his people. He is he is flawless in their eyes, and that's a problem. And they it's say the, it the out loud. They're like, yeah. he could kill somebody. He could whatever. Like because, like you said, like like Obama had to be scandal free leading up to even get elected. But Trump has, on record, been reported for sexually assaulting over twenty fucking women. Yeah, and paid them off, and he's here still somehow. Mm -hmm. Like that would not happen with Obama. Give me a break disgusting like everyone's like oh yeah um when he did that the access hollywood thing or whatever and i mean i it's 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 just disgusting i mean everyone's like oh it's locker room talk and all this other stuff he didn't know the, the camera was on he was like oh yeah, yeah. He was like, let me just grab him in the pussy let me just let no. me you know? oh like, my God. On, bro. this is the president of the united states that has this and everyone's like oh wow he's he's so self-centered he's He's a destruction. He, he's, he, and everyone's like, oh, the media is trying to separate us. And I'm like, no, Every, no, media is not trying to separate us. America is trying to separate us. There are people that, are, that think they're better than other people. How's yeah. that the media? How is the media is not telling us that there's white supremacist groups yeah. that can just protest and have police protection? Yeah. P protection <laughs> versus tear gas? Yeah. yeah. They, you know, white people just go pr protest for not having a mask on. Or whatever it's like oh yeah i'm uh, i'm gonna have my gun out on protest for i don't want to i don't want to have to wear a mask and it's so funny because those same people that don't want to wear a mask in public wear a fucking hood over their heads exactly can, can, can breathe through that shit you know and that's that's the 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 scariest part that for for you guys for black people is is that like double standard of like first of all it was like a week before George Floyd was murdered that the fucking Trump supporters were protesting the no mask thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then cut to 
us protesting with masks and hand sanitizer and being safe in the pandemic nobody's carrying fucking guns because no fucking way like that's just like danger zone for black people but like the white people need to know to step in front of the black people because you're gonna get hurt less easily than they will but it's like we have the fucking national guard we've got helicopters coming down so we can't hear what people are saying like suddenly there's a curfew that's never happened as, as long was as like, you guys, and then it was a funny thing. It was like, you guys just need to follow directions and follow the law. I'm like, you too, bitch, put on a mask. Right. That's like, the law. Like, like, that's the law. Like, it's like, oh, don't do this and don't. And that's a, this is a, hit the hypocrisy and, and just the hypocrisy of, of, of America and how people are. It's just disgusting. It's and, disgusting. and they just have, they're just blind to a lot of things. And I'm like, you guys are doing the same thing. It's like all lives matter, but you don't want to wear a mask. That yeah. People. Yeah. Like, all lives matter except for except for when it when it makes me uncomfortable. Then yeah. my life matters the most. And like these are the people that are pro choice or anti choice and like pro life supposedly. Yeah. It's like okay, you're pro life. Like you have to wear a piece like of cloth on your face for twenty fucking minutes. There's people yeah. that have to wear it all day at the grocery store, and then forget about the people in the hospitals that have two masks and then the fucking like yeah, goggles and then the two ha- like do you see the one there was like a black guy that like he did a whole video he's like before you complain and he takes off 16 layers of stuff and you're just like mad because because you have to wear a fucking mask like that's like the epitome of of privilege right there yeah, that's, privilege. Yeah. that's the biggest thing you have to concern yourself with is like putting on a mask and trying to save some lives and 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 and, and this is just what it's and i hope I just I I don't believe in God, but I pray to God that that um that this dude doesn't win. And yeah. There's some change because like if he doesn't win, like what is his people gonna do? Yeah. You know. I'm I'm more yeah I'm worried about like one I'm worried that that they're gonna make him win somehow super illegally, which they're already kind of trying to do with voter suppression and like defunding the post office conveniently when people want mail and ballots most, which I've I've done for years, um and I'm like this is like this is gonna be some shady shit so either if he wins we're gonna have to really like pump it up and start burning shit or he's gonna lose and they're gonna really turn on everybody that's on our side i guess yeah, that's what i said if you can't hear me um if you can't um hear me when i'm peaceful you're gonna see me when i'm violent yeah um that's that good... is that that is just what what it is and and michael michael max has some great great quotes about if you stick a a knife in my back a nine inch knife in my back and you pull it out six inches there's no progress there there's still a knife in my back yeah even if you pull it all the way out there's no progress there because there's still a hole in my back yeah you can't you can't you can't just just say it's changing because this is happening but yeah i i, I still i still believe that america is at its core people are good um and and that's crazy maybe i'm crazy maybe i'm crazy to believe but, and, and I'm but you believe I, but you believe that it's that that th- this is going to be a little different this time because this is not your first rodeo watching always, all of these always different until it's not and there has been some progress there has been things that have changed there you know have there are things you know black people have been able to do more now than mm-hmm. there is in the past, but that old cliche is the more that things change, the more they stay the same. And, and that's just some of the same shit. Like, you know, more things change, the, the more, you know, you see police killing uh, uh, innocent, innocent black people. And people are like, well, yeah, the police kill more white people than, than black people. But I'm like, there's more white people in America. If you look at the percentages, it's all about the percentages. But to me also, like, that's like one of the arguments I get from one of my family members is like the statistics. And I'm like, remember who the statistics are coming from though. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's like, uh, you know, Bianca Christopher, she got pulled over on her bicycle the other day. And, and like, for some reason, like on the ticket she got or like the warning, like there was like a race and they like marked her as white. And I was like, oh, how convenient that 
you said that, you know, so I'm like, first of all, I don't trust the statistics. Second of all, I don't care about numbers. I'm looking at names and there's a lot of dead black people that shouldn't be dead right now and nothing is happening. Um, to, yeah. And that's to, the thing. Like when, if you tell them that, yeah, the police kill white people and then everybody's showing me the same guy in Arizona like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone showed me that same guy. Yeah. That was fucked up. The police killed that dude. But that's the thing. I don't oh. trust the police. That's Is what that that video do. that you showed the other day where they shot that guy? The like, cause you just posted this video the other day where like the guy came at the cop with a knife. In Michigan. Yes. Yeah. But that was like, okay. First of all, like maybe didn't need to shoot him that many times, but definitely should have well, shot him. Well, she, she's, and this is where police training comes into play. She freaked out. Yeah. And she, she shouldn't have been, she was at close range. And if you shoot 10 times at a person and you can't disable them, at close range, you shouldn't be a police officer. That was you so mean, close you know, for how many times that he was still. Yeah, you should be able to take the guy out with one shot. You were close range. She freaked out. You know yeah. that was, she was that, just... that showed lack of training because I was like, rightfully so. This is now a time when somebody is almost getting you, but like, he was like right there, and she still missed, and, and it's, then and just it's kept shooting. And it's also a strength thing too. I mean, yeah, and, it, and we want to talk about equality, but she. You know, it's a strip. She's she was a tiny woman, so yeah, like, he could over easily overpower her. And that has nothing to do with saying women shouldn't be police officers. That's just what it is. You know, yeah. I I've seen situations where a, a bigger person, no matter if it's male or female, has has over has overtaken the police officer. Yeah, you know, because they were bigger, stronger than that police officer. So that's just that's just that was the situation, and she she was afraid for her life. And I can't imagine. No. What it's like to be a police officer, but I would never want to be a police officer. Yeah, the same. I fucking hate cops anyway, but yeah, I would yeah. never want to be a police officer. People to be police officers, there are some really good police officers out there. I've interacted with them. I'm not saying that all police officers are bad, but for every bad police officer, there's one that's worse. And yeah, that is just or a hundred that's worse. Yeah. I, I think a couple. Of them. I I just think also like just like. Like you were mentioning the train, like the training and the fact that she freaked out. It's like, they should be good at like hand combat too. Like I saw this video of this, like, it was like a Latino looking cop fighting this. And they, they just like, he like took off his like guns and just started like sparring with the dude. And they were like doing like the side. I'm like, yes, more of like just straight up ass whoopings, please. Can we do that before we start? Just Yes. It took me four years to get a theater degree. If I had a gun, it should take me four years to be able to fucking get a gun and patrol the streets. Oh yeah. If it, if it takes me four years to get a theater degree, it should take four years to become a fucking police officer. I think police officers should have to have at least an associates where they have a, a background in criminal justice mm -hmm. and there needs to be some kind of reform. They don't need milit They don't need to militize the police. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like that is when, when we say defund the police, that's what we mean. Like, yeah. Don't, why do the police need a tank? And Amanda. they don't need this much fucking money. Like the what? Like the fact that when I saw this budget was the first time I noticed the budget. I was like, billion dollars, uh, three billion. They have. Oh wow. And, and and like our we there's like because it's like a bar chart, so it's like yellow, three billion for the cops, and all all the little ones. It's like disaster relief. You can barely see the sliver of yellow because yeah. there's so little money. And it's like the only thing that came that we got Garcetti to pull back was to give 150 million out of it. That's just 150 million of billions of dollars that could go to stopping yeah. crime in the first place if people aren't starving or hungry or on the street. You know what I mean? You like, $30 and I had to, if I had $30 and I had to give you $1.50, I could still get whatever meal I want to get. Oh my God. Yeah. But that's, I, 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 I'm like huge proponent of defunding them heavily starting over if you've had a fucking discrepancy where you accidentally quote unquote whatever killed somebody you want you stepped out of bounds you're so you're done you got to reapply or you just can't anymore like if there's good ones prove it reapply for your fucking job and get it again it shouldn't be that hard you know there's plenty of people that have to recertify for being doctors and my dad had to recertify to be a pilot to still be able to fly Mm -hmm. And if and if he fucked up, there should be a, there should be a police license. If yeah. you get points, you can't. You get suspended, like, or you get you get your police license revoked. Yeah, exactly. Like you get your law degree revoked. You can get everything revoked except for that. Uh, the you know this shit. It's it's all fucked off.
So um, I know we've been talking for about an hour now. So maybe if we want to start wrapping up, I don't know if you have other stuff to do, but is there anything else you want to tell the listeners before you can start uh, if there's anything you want to promote? No, I mean, I, for me, I just tell people just check, check your privilege, check your friends that are doing some silly shit, check your family members. Don't be afraid to stand up to me, Ma. And people, <laughs> yeah. Shit. You're They're not like, too oh, old to know not, better. That's not cool, you know. Yeah. Um, let them know where you stand, and I try to do that uh, with my parents and let them know where I stand because they, you know, we still we have different ideologies about some things, and but my parents know that this is who I am, and they know that they can't, you know, change who I am, but they're going to still love me despite right. that we have differences in views. So just be able to do that to people that are close to you and. And, and don't let it pass. Don't be passive. Like, don't yeah. let, let it go by. Like, if someone says something, see something, say something. Yeah. Um, know that your Black friend does not have all the issues. Uh, yeah. I mean, they have all the answers. They yeah. Have all the answers. And, and don't put the weight on you to, to, to use your energy further. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I've, been a, I've been, my girlfriend's been telling me to make this video. I'll make this video about, um, what to do, you know, what for white people, a guide for white people, what to do uh, during these times. Uh, that would be funny. I really love the one that you did that was like, um, that was like mocking, like it wasn't the Imagine video, but it was the uh, next uh, one I that came. Responsibility, yes. Yeah, see, I take responsibility. That shit was so fucking funny. I was, I was very happy to see, because because I was when I saw that, I was like, I have to do this. And so yeah. I called in some favors to some friends and um, and they, they came through, and that was a, that was a really big success. You could check it out. I take a responsibility with uh, black comedians, and we yeah, uh, yeah we, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun to, to get together. Yeah. Um, sorry, it was fun. It was fun to get together, and um, I'm glad it turned out the way that it did. But but yeah, just that's what it is, and just follow me on Instagram. I I'm I'm very active in the community. Yes, I'm, I protest every day. I didn't go to any protests because my. I don't trust the police, but I protest. <laughs> I let my voice be heard. And uh, I, I did something with, uh, for Breonna Taylor, a bunch of other uh, black comedians. Now. I saw the Elijah McClain uh, thing that you did. It was, it was so gut wrenching, but it was awesome. Thank it, you. That it, was very it, tough to do. Uh, it was, it, yeah, no, I was a very emotional to watch. It's fucked up. Yeah. I'll, I'll put all the links to all this stuff in the show notes of the episode so people can yeah, find it, it easier, but. Yeah. And, we did the Breonna Taylor collage and like today was a good day to arrest the cops that killed Breonna Taylor. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a guy, I'm not going to say his, his name, the comic's name, but uh, some of his fans went after him. It's like, oh, not you too. Like, really? No, you shouldn't just, like, just tell jokes. And I was just like, this is the same thing that's been going on. Like, oh, just dance, monkey. Just dance. Like, don't. Oh, my God. Don't, you know? And, but for me, like, I never want anybody that's a fan of, of my comedy and it's weird that I have people that, that listen to me. It's still such a weird concept. Like, I never want anybody that, that is a fan of my comedy to be surprised by any black shit that I do. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't, there shouldn't be a shock that, that I'm posting shit about this. Like, and yeah. that is what I'm very proud of, that I stand for who I am, and I'm, I'm unapologetically, unapologetically black. Yeah. Even I believe, and um, that's just who I am. So, yeah. I'm Team Stewart, I'm a Team Stewart at every where you can find me. Oh, media. right. Well, thank you so much, Mateen. This has been an amazing conversation and I'll link all your stuff. Uh, guys, definitely check him out. He's got a lot of great stuff coming. Um, I'm excited about this, uh, this next thing that you said that your girlfriend said you needed to do because the videos that you've made recently have been hilarious. So, yeah, and, you. Oh, slash gut-wrenching in a way that we have to watch it and cry because you that's what You have to laugh to keep yourself from crying and um, yeah, this was fun. I'm, I'm my bad about the other day. I was at home dealing with, <laughs> I was watching three kids and it was just, it was just all over the place. No worries. That's the beauty of Zoom. We can just pop on whenever. So have a good rest of your day and uh, I'll, I'll uh, hopefully see you soon in public if this uh, pandemic ever ends. <laughs> yeah, we'll for a month and let's get back. All right. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.